In the past, there weren't boundaries. There were not concerns of areas. And this is, you know, prior to the 1960s into the past, there were, uh, and I think you could see this in some many elders' comments of look out on the land. There's no boundaries. There's no gates. There's no, we, we roam this land or we use this land and we don't own it. Uh, if you look at it like that and if you give it the respect uh, it, it deserves that it produces everything that we have lived off of and that is us that when we eventually die and we do go back to the earth and uh, so there's a respect the the word the point we're trying to that they're getting to is you have to respect each other you have to respect the earth and everything that's around us environment so how is that today uh, our village corporation knows that we have we own the land right around the area, certain areas, and, and shareholders come and say, well, do we, there's someone on our corporation land over here, we should do something about it. They didn't do that in the past. Uh, what is the, the view is, well, can we develop this land to the benefit economically of the shareholders so we can have jobs and money, dividends? So that, that wasn't that way in the past. And there's more of a soulless uh, view. Uh, it's a corporate view of the land versus in the past where people um, had the, at least the understanding that we can't go out there and just do something to the land without having some responsibility. And uh, it's, it's, it hasn't been very long, you know, that we were polluting the land ourselves. And it wasn't very long where we could see, we're, we're polluting the land. In a matter of 30, 40 years, we stopped. We could see it, and we stopped. And we're trying to do something about it now. So it's an, it's an awaking, emerging understanding of not only your person, who you are, but who your people are, and how they came to where they are today because of what they did and believed and how do we see it now as a corporation and it has a different view uh, a number of elders are able to lift that corporation view or move it and still see the value and respect for land and how to use it and how to retain it maintain it so uh, you know that's you know it's it's a we think you know people say well you're an elder you know why don't you tell us what to do and I and I said well I'm not an elder some of the elders that I talk to are still refer to me as a kid you know which I am you know and they're in my eyes too I'm a kid but uh, younger people have you know talked to me like I am an elder because it but uh, these things that we mentioned about the past and our connection with the, the land and the earth and animals, air, and everything gives you a sense of ties to the earth. It then points to who you are, who you are and your responsibility then to maintain that earth because it maintains who you are. So I didn't have that view in the, you know, when I was growing up, but I just grew up. And, Everything was fine. But now I have that view. So maybe that's the elder view that we're, we're developing and understanding. But I, I would like to see more of the elder elders step forward and, and give us their view of where we are and where we should be going and what we should be understanding. Because I think they really do have a, a deeper view and could see us. I mean, us meaning the Angsa Corporation implementers, where we are, where we stand, and what we should be doing. Because I'd like to see a picture of where we are in, in 2070, 100 years from now, or 50 years from now, and see what 
the corporation people say. You know, some of them already have their, their mission says, we will be a $100 million corporation in the year 2050. Well, their, their view is all money. That it's written right in their mission statement. We will be a $500 million corporation in 20 years, or whatever that is. I know two corporations have that money segment built right into their mission and purpose. Uh, I think at a certain point, they're going to understand that, uh, you know, when you, they could be a zero corporation in, in five years if things don't work out. And uh, how does that help them get to their $100 million goal? Now, um, you know, there's, there's been, and I think and maybe we, we all might have heard this, but I know of elders that, have, that knew that something, this claims act was going to come, it's coming down the line. They knew of it. They, they foretold it. It was in there. They knew it. And some of them uh, said, had words of warning for us. Us meaning today during the implementation is that families will be fighting against families, people will be fighting against people, villages against each other, and there's going to be a real disruption among us. And if you look at uh, how shareholders and how families can get some shares for one family member, none for another family member, there's a real division in the family. If a person dies and there's no will, and through probate they get shares go out to some people that are uh, in, um, adopted kids versus natural kids. So there's a, a clash there. They, could, they seen that, and they warned us about this. But we couldn't, I couldn't see it, but now, because of implementation, and I see it, it's happening. But the other thing is, uh, uh, the, this thing that happened down in Haiti, the big earthquake there, and all the people in Haiti, Haiti, all the all the big upheaval, the kill, the death, and everything. Those people running around that the population centers. Uh, wondering where's all the aid, all the, all the countries in the world were trying to help. Some of those Haitian people that used to live in the country went back to the country. They started going back out to their lands. They could go out there where there was water or there was uh, something, a place where they could sleep without having contamination from all the, the death and, and destruction that took place there. That's Native peoples of a region, indigenous peoples returning to their roots. Our elders and indigenous peoples throughout the world said that there's going to be a time period when something like this is going to occur. And uh, you have to be aware of this. And it was generally, they said, in, in so many words, global warming. There's going to be a change in the weather. There's going to be a change in our life. In the end, there's going to be a big upheaval, and in the end, things will be better. So there's going to be a big change. So what happens to the United States here in the last year? You know, the, the world, the economic fallout and crisis in the financial world. Uh, we've come close to being something like Haiti. Um, our, all of uh, the angst claims settlement corporations that have put their funds and investments in Wall Street, seeing the, that thing just go right down, and to some cases, real, you know, it was disastrous in the investments. Um, those, the elders said, uh, be aware of that time period, and through your culture, you will know what to do in order to survive. So that, to me, tells me that we better understand how we used to live. We have to know how we used to live because if it ever gets to something like Haiti or some other place and it could happen here in the United States and it, it almost did, better be able to live like the native people used to live before contact, which was not too long ago.
you know, we could, we could continue to talk about the successes of the corporations. Uh, the latest thing that helps Native corporations, Alaska Native corporations, called ANCs, was the SBA 8A contracting uh, for Alaska Native, uh, Native corporations. And that is uh, being helping corporations now move way into the multi-million dollar range into the billions of dollars to help their corporations. It's a, a challenge and an exciting time for Native people to assess where they are. Look at where, try to paint the picture where we're going. And then uh, try to see the realistically how we can change what's going wrong. But I think that there's you know, some big challenges for Native people of the future. And I think what's really going to help them is our uh, scholarship money and our urgings to young people to go to school and get the best education they can so they know how to deal in the Western world, in the world, internationally, and know their cultural values in themselves. They got to know all that in order to be and understand where they stand in the world because I believe they're going to be leaders in that end world picture that the elders draw, draw that they describe. With time period changes and all this, you're going to have to have, and I think that's why survivors are survivors because they teach other people how to survive. So you say, we, we say AFN and it's, and one of the model, one of the, the themes for one of the AFN conventions was we are survivors. And uh, I remember that one. It's something like that. that and, and uh, you know, <clears throat> why are we survivors? We're survivors for a reason. <laughs>